good morning and happy Earth Day. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Corpus Christi. My name is the Reverend Christina Hockman, and I'm honored to serve as both your minister and your worship associate this morning. So don't ever think you're not getting your money's worth out of me. <laughs> we welcome you to our worship service celebrated here each week, mindful of the principles of our free faith. To describe a little about what Unitarian Universalism is, today I will share with you some words from the Reverend Shanna Lingood. This is a place where you're welcome, where you're invited into a fuller relationship with yourself, with the spirit of life, with other people, to build a better world, and to build a better you. This is a story about our solar system and the beautiful planets gathered around our brilliant, bright, dazzling sun, dancing circles through, the, through space over millions of years. Circling the same star for eons, all of these planets became good friends. And once every 5,000 years or so, they get together for an interplanetary conference. <laughs> they handle business decisions in an inclusive, democratic way, like deciding that even though Pluto wasn't technically a planet anymore, she should be welcome like everyone else. <laughs> and sometimes they play sports and games with the asteroid belt and they generally have a good time together. But at the last interplanetary conference, Earth was very upset. They used to be so gentle. They used to thank me for everything they took, for the, planets, for the plants and animals they need, needed for food, for the rivers full of fish, for the, for the gentle rains that watered their crops, and for the great trees they used to build their homes. They used to sing and dance to thank me, and sometimes I would sing with them. Oh, we all had so much fun back then. I used to love to watch them. So clever those humans were, so full of invention. <coughs> I couldn't wait to see what they were going to do next. Well, what's the problem then? They seem so nice. Earth sighed deeply, and huge waves crashed against the shores of a thousand beaches. Great forests bent and swayed in a sudden violent wind that swept across continents. They used to be cute and friendly and polite. Now they just take and take and take. They tear me up looking for gold and oil that they burn until my skies are black and smelly. Sometimes I think I'll never stop sneezing and coughing. They eat all the animals and bulldoze everything to make room for their cities. And you won't believe how messy they are. They make incredible amounts of garbage and they just throw it in my oceans or leave it lying around in great heaps. And, and they always want more, more, more. No matter how much they take, they're never satisfied. The worst part is they don't sing to me anymore and they never ever say thank you. I just don't know what to do. They're there, Earth. They're there. We're here for you. It's okay to cry. Earth. Do you remember the trouble I was having with those little green creatures that used to live on me? You know, the Martians? <laughs> they did the same thing to me. Uh, I gave them several opportunities to straighten up, but they didn't listen. So I sucked all the air and water back inside myself and let the sun, uh, let the sun turn my skin into a giant burning desert. <laughs> those ungrateful Martians are all gone now. Good riddance. Tough love, I call it. If you want my advice, just shake them off like the fleas they are. Freeze them in an ice age, drown them in floods. You'll soon forget they are ever here. <laughs> Mercury, Pluto, you seem upset, little ones. What do you think? Earth, I am so sorry for your pain. The way they are treating you is terrible. But look at me. I float alone in space, just a big block of ice. No one has ever sung to me. As I drift along through eternity, I dream that someday I will be able to share myself with others. I dream that one day I will be needed, that I will be able to feed creatures of my own and watch them grow and thrive. But it seems that it is not meant to be, not for me. But so many creatures depend on you, Earth. If, even if they forget how to treat you, how to sing to you, how to thank you, maybe they can learn. Maybe they can grow up. Please be patient for just a little longer, Earth. But maybe Mars is right. I can't wait forever for those foolish humans to start behaving themselves. 
I don't think Brother Mars is as happy as he pretends to be. I'm fine. I, I love living alone. I just I have some space dust in my eye. Then what do you think I should do, Pluto? It might be time for you to sing to them. And so the earth began to sing as she had not sung for a very long time. It was a song of creation, of love and promise of warm earth and cool water, of fresh spring grass and deep forest. She sang of buffalo and beaver, of fern, sage, and willow. She sang of dolphins and mountains and people. Yes, she even sang of people. Despite their behavior, she still loved them dearly. The earth sang and nearly ev every living thing was swayed and leaped and sang with her. But most of the humans could not hear her song. None of them heard it, in fact, aside from a handful of children, the young and the young at heart. I invite you to rise and join your voices with the song of the earth as we sing our thanks with hymn number 163, for the earth forever turning. <laughs> In our, in our drama today, we heard about many of the problems human beings have caused for the earth. Now I would like to bring your attention, the intention, attention of your mind, and the attention of your heart to one of these problems in particular. That problem is a really big one, and it's called climate change, a phenomenon that puts every living creature on this earth at risk. So let's watch this brief video to remind ourselves what climate change is and, and what it means to all of us and to all of the life on this planet. This is the world. That's you and that's me. The world has the perfect temperature to keep all living things alive and happy. This temperature depends on a balance. The sun's heat goes to earth to make it warm. The sun's heat bounces back to space to make the earth cool. When this balance is lost, the climate changes. The earth's climate has changed many times before. This is called natural climate change. It's caused by volcanic eruptions, changes in the sun's energy, and changes in the earth's orbit. Greenhouse gases also make the earth warmer. They trap heat from the sun. Greenhouse gases are like a blanket covering the earth. It started in the 1700s. Humans started to build more things. We burn coal to make electricity. We burn oil to make our cars and planes move. We use chemicals to make things. We cut down lots of trees. We burn gas to cook food. We dump lots of trash on landfills. We plant a lot more rice. All these things release greenhouse gases. Remember the blanket over the earth? Because of humans, it got much, much thicker. When I get hot, I sweat. I even get dizzy. Imagine the earth. Because it's hotter, glaciers and ice sheets are melting. Seas are rising, storms are getting stronger, some places are getting dry, even the sea is getting warmer. All living things are in big trouble. So what should we do? We need to change the way we live so we can stop releasing so much greenhouse gases. That way, the earth's blanket will go back to normal. We also need to be ready for what climate change will bring. In December, there will be a big meeting of nations. They'll meet in Paris to decide how each country can help. Their decision will decide the future of Earth, our home. program here we had a trainer uh, from Citizens Climate Lobby. It's an international organization that is seeking to establish a local chapter here. The Citizens Climate Lobby is a nonprofit, nonpartisan grassroots advocacy organization focused on national policies to address climate change. And volunteers for this organization offer a respectful, nonpartisan approach to climate education designed to create a foundation for climate action across all geographic re regions and political inclinations, and they build upon their shared values rather than partisan divides. 
and they em empower their supporters to engage with their local communities and legislators to work towards the adoption of fair, effective, and sustainable climate change solutions. This organization promotes a carbon-free and dividend, dividend program on which volunteers are trained to build relationships with elected officials, the media, and their local community. So if you would like more information about participating with the Citizens Climate Lobby, they have a great website. It is actually citizensclimatelobby.org. And or if you're interested in receiving more information and um, interested in joining a local chapter, on the petition table outside in the back of the, the foyer is a, uh, a legal, legal pad and you can sign your name on the list and we'll make sure it gets to the Citizens Climate Lobby people. Also, um, if you have questions, see Colin Sykes, our local expert on the subject, and I can um, help hook you, hook you up with the organization as well. But yet, um, because this hour is for church, um, it's a special hour that we carve out of our busy lives to connect, not just with our brains and with our inner activists, but with our emotions. And connect. we try to connect spiritually with the big things, the big questions facing our lives, as well as the lives in our, on our planet, which we are deeply interconnected with. So today we're actually going to do a hands-on ritual, and it's one that has been practiced all over the globe. It's called the Climate Ribbon, and it's a ritual that really allows us to take some time to reflect on what climate change means to us personally. So all the great justice movements, whether it's Gandhi and the Indian Independence Movement, or Nelson Mandela and the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, or our own civil rights movement in the US, it's not just about our brains and our feet in the streets, but it is about our hearts and our souls. So if we're to reverse climate change and make, and make our way to our own post-carbon future, our movement must also be great. And it's got to be global. And the movement has to stay strong for decades. And we've got to carry it deep in our hearts. So there is a really big spiritual aspect to this work as well. And that's what we hope to connect you with today connect this global problem to our individual hearts. But facing the facts of climate change really isn't easy. Its scale is so big that we, it's very overwhelming. And sometimes because it's so overwhelming, we just kind of switch off. And for many of us, climate change is still invisible, although it's becoming visible to more and more people on our planet. But when it's abstract, we put it out of our minds. So today, here we've created a safe space to open our hearts to the reality of what's happening on our planet. So during our silent meditation and during our meditation music, please take a moment to reflect on the question on the screen. What do you love and hope to never lose to climate change? Try to be specific and personal. Think of a phrase or a string of words to describe what is at stake for you. A woman from Milwaukee wrote on her ribbon, they hope that my ch the hope that my children can have healthy lives. Others have written the sound of bees buzzing in the morning. Another person, the coastline of Manhattan. Someone from Ohio wrote next year's harvest. Another person wrote Miami, my city. In a few moments, you will have the opportunity to write your own words on your own ribbon. Please join in a moment of silent contemplation regarding the question above. So now the hands-on part of our ritual will begin. In the back of the room, we have several tab tables with markers and ribbons where you will write your answer to the question on the screen that you have been reflecting on. You're welcome to sign your name on your ribbon as well. As you finish with your ribbon, a volunteer will guide you to the back patio to our tree today that is serving as the tree of life, where you will tie on your ribbon. We will then finish our service outside. If you are less mobile and would prefer to work sitting down, we have chairs at the work tables, and we'll also reserve the patio benches for those who are more comfortable being seated. 
And at any time along the way, you would like someone to help write out your ribbon or tie the ribbon on your tree for you, there will be a, uh, a teenager at your disposal. <laughs> Just ask, don't be shy. So I am going to ask the teens now to go and make their ribbon first, so they'll be ready to assist everyone else. And then right after the teens are finished, I'm going to have the choir go so they'll be able to regroup and sing later. And then it's up to the rest of you. Um, we will have some music, and when you are ready and there are spots at the table, just filter back and make your ribbon. There's plenty of time, no need to hurry. Aline will play her virtuistic music for us. Um, all that I do ask is that uh, let's do this ritual as silently as possible as reverently as possible, solemnly as possible, until everyone, so be quiet until everyone is outside and all of the ribbons have been tied. I know that's really hard for you to use, but I think we're up to that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and proceed with our ribbon making, and I will meet you outside. Mm -hmm. 